Okay, so um, I'm originally from New Zealand, about four and a half years in Malaysia. We went to church there, and about four years now in Singapore. Well, I grew up in the United States, in the South, um, and lived there my entire life. I traveled quite a bit, but actually living somewhere. I've only lived in Malaysia for one summer, and then here for almost nine years. Um, we're originally from South Africa, and we lived there for most of our lives, but about 14, 14 15 years ago now, uh, we left South Africa. We've lived in Qatar, uh, Dubai, Beijing, and now Singapore. Oh, I've lived, of course, in the United States. I've lived in Japan. I've lived in Singapore. So, I've lived in many countries. I was born in Germany. I lived there for a few years when I was a child. Then we moved to Peru. I lived in Peru for many years. Then I lived in Canada. After Canada, I lived in the US. And after that, we moved to France, to Paris. Then after Paris, we moved to Brazil, to Rio de Janeiro. And now we live in Singapore. Well, we're Filipino. And uh, we moved, we got married in 1996. And Soon after we left the Philippines, we lived in Japan for 12 years, and then uh, China, Guangzhou for three years, and then we moved to Singapore, moved back to the Philippines, and then we're back here. Okay, I've lived in Northern Ireland and Singapore. Um, well, New Zealand is a lot more casual as a country. So part of our culture is, um, you know, there's a much less kind of power difference between, between people, you know, sociological, <laughs> seems like this is your area, not mine, right? Um, so, you know, like a great example of that is we have this great story where um, our Prime Minister was, was running late between two uh, speaking engagements and her car was pulled over and the, and the, and the police officer gave her a ticket. Right, for, uh, for, you know, so if that was in Malaysia, um, it would have had like half a dozen motorcycles, right? Or well, in most countries, that would, never, that would never happen. So how that kind of plays into church is, um, it's just, it's much more relaxed. It's okay to turn up in shorts and t-shirt. It's okay to wear jandals. So for me coming to, um, say, IBC, it's more of an American, culture or influence, um, people, if they're up the front, not always, but tend to wear like shirt and tie more, so there's a dress thing that's kind of going on, um, it's a bit more formal, yeah, a bit more structured. Um, definitely the church in the States was a lot more one-dimensional when you think international. Um, we had very few other countries that were represented there. I know the year that I left, we had our first Asian come into the choir, and that was a big deal. Um, even African Americans, and all of that was quite few. It was just a very one-dimensional body of Christ. So, in fact, that's the whole reason why we ended up going to Malaysia for a summer, and we ended up here, because we felt like there had to be something different. So, but I think what I noticed in South Africa especially is that sometimes there is a blurring of lines between culture and faith. Uh, but when we went to the Middle East, what was most refreshing for me, for example, was seeing people of um, basically of Arabic descent being able to worship in the Arabic language. In Beijing, we saw people worshiping in Mandarin, and we would even sing Mandarin and, and Arabic, which was really fun. Uh, I remember the first church we visited in Qatar was actually a Filipino church, and they didn't speak English. So we would worship and we actually had uh, someone who would sit with us and basically translate the sermons to us while it was happening. And uh, after church, church was like a half day affair because after the service there was always a community lunch. So that was our first experience of an international church when we left our own country. And I think what stood out for us was, it, especially stood out for me, was people don't need to give up their culture. Um, they can bring all of that into different aspects of, of worshiping God, and I think that's what we saw in every other place. So whenever we moved, we looked for an international church, and because they're accommodating for so many different denominations, uh, it allows for everyone to come in and, and feel relatively free. Yeah, so the difference is be actually quite a few. 
Uh, back in Virginia, I went to a church that was predominantly black church. And one of the marks of a predominantly black church are the rhythm. Be it the rhythm of the songs that are being sung, uh, the pastor will also have a rhythm in delivering his message. And in general, there's a rhythm about the whole service. So things have to happen in a certain way, at a certain kind of a time. And even the pastor will know when he's getting ready to wind up his message because he gets a little bit more rhythmical and he also gets into a sing-song style of delivering the last part of the message. Um, also, what is very different from my church back at home is, in the black culture, we have a tendency to what I call talk back to the pastor. So if he says something and we agree, we say, amen. Or if something is said and we don't understand, we'll say something like, make it plain. Let us know what's going on. So we talk, so we're very vocal. We're very, um, like the call and response of the African communities. We hear something and we respond back. So it's oftentimes a conversation. So I consider my church in Canada my home church because that's where I became a Christian. And um, so the big difference was that I've seen is that that was a small Hispanic speaking church and we had about 50 to 60 people. So after we moved to churches, when we moved to the US uh, and to France, there were larger churches, some big congregations, similar to, to IBC. So a big difference is the size of the, uh, of the congregation. And, uh, and it has some, some benefits and, and disadvantages, right? Some benefits is that the, the, there are many programs, there are many activities. Some of the disadvantages is that in big churches, it gets more difficult to, to be able to integrate with the groups. Right? And then when we were in Guangzhou, it was very different because um, there was no, there was no, there was no pastor, there was no pastor actually uh, that, that was licensed uh, by the government who could preach with us. So basically it was uh, lay leaders who was leading our And we our actually church. had to bring our passports to church to prove that we weren't locals because the locals weren't allowed to worship with in the foreign church. Also other difference is the size. So Northern Ireland's quite small and my church is it's not small in comparison to other churches at home, but compared to IBC it's quite tiny. Yeah. I guess what migration and taking me out of comfort zone and out of what was normal into a less comfortable church environment I learned about the value of small groups and connectivity being what church is really about more than the style of the service or the style of worship or the singing and it, it, worship can be in so many different styles but ultimately it was the connection with other people in their journey with God it was the same that makes sense. Because of migration, we're, we're worshiping in Singapore, the international church with over 50 nationalities, and it's completely different. It's definitely one, not one dimensional anymore. We worship with people from all over the world, and because of that, your view and your mindset changes completely. Even the way that I view God, um, how he sees us, how he sees his children, how he sees the world. Um, it's completely different. I am humbled by how I used to be, and of course I'm still changing and growing, but um, America is such a minute part of the whole big picture. In the South, where I'm from, such a, a minute piece of the puzzle of this huge mass so it's um, a huge blessing to be able to transition out of that when we left south africa i know as a family we we agree that we uh we truly and authentically met god in the desert you know when we went to the middle east that's where we really had a one-on-one -on -one relationship with god we got to see a different side of what it meant to be in relationship with god and we also got to understand what it meant when it said, you know, the, the Nike logo, impossible is nothing. That's something that became a uh, kind of vivid reality for us. Yeah, so. 
Yeah, that's actually different. So, like I was saying before, because of the fact that I went to a predominantly black church, there were often things that would come about and we would feel in a certain way because of more of our culture of being raised as a black person in the southern states. So we have that prejudice that's going on that's been in our history for a long time. And also, we would get more into what's more cultural as opposed to being what is actually biblical. So coming here to IBC has actually changed my perspective on a lot of things because it's let me really see what God would have, which is to have all races, all kinds of people are actually going to be in heaven. So being in a predominantly black church will have you easily believe, or predominantly white church, or predominantly Hispanic church for that matter, will have you believe that only your kind is actually going to be there. And that's wrong because it's just not biblical. That has helped me to understand that I have to be able to reach out to everyone and I have to be able to at least listen to everybody's point of view with regard to um, interpretations of the Bible or struggles that they actually might have with just general life and be willing to help anybody regardless of their race or regardless of their approach to coming to solving the problem. So. It has added a lot. Right, because every time we've moved to a different church and to a different country, we had the opportunity to go to churches that are multinational and to see how people uh, worship in their own way, you know, people from different nationalities, different races, different countries. Uh, I've been able to see how they love the Lord and they worship the Lord in different ways, and that has also allowed me and enabled me to worship the Lord in, in my own way. In, in Guangzhou, there was a, there's a big uh, um, African co uh, community. So in our church, maybe 30, 40 percent from Africa, and, and just the style of, of worship and, and yeah, the the, the, the amount dancing. of emotion and, and passion that bring in, you know, so just the openness to that kind of, of worship um, been broadened by the migration itself. Yeah, different styles of worship, and but still glorifying one God. It's amazing. International churches. And then the vice versa. How's our faith help the migration? You know, I think um, we, our faith. You know, we we trust the the Lord's plan for us. So wherever we were uh, in, in a migration, let's say there's no family support in Japan. It's winter. We have baby twins, we're having a hard time, and there's no family support. But with, with faith comes, you know, hope that um, you're here with God's purpose. So we see it positively. We see them, so it, our faith helps see the migration uh, positively, see, have a positive outlook for that. Um, and, um, and before each move, we have to have faith that this is where God wants us to go because you know um, there's there's so many unknown things and we always pray together before we move all those four or five times mm -hmm. and God has never let us down he's always brought us to the right place so it's just yeah. amazing and then the, the the other element of that is um, how being Christians has helped our migration is the um, enable us to immediately assimilate with the community that we're familiar with you know so it might be a foreign community Japan China but immediately we go to a, our church and we're at home with brothers and sisters there of the same faith so it helps us gain friendship so quickly uh, within a foreign environment. So that's the other way that it has helped us. Yeah. I know for sure if I didn't have my faith in God that I would have went home about... <laughs> Actually, I probably wouldn't have even made it here. But by coming here and trying to like just live my life here without God, I know that it would have been a real struggle and it would have been it would have been impossible, I think. I know a lot of people who do come and that they don't have a faith in God. And 
yet, but that's that, that's how they, they manage it. But I know that if I didn't have him and my trust in God, then I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do. Um, but I, I don't think that it's so much because it was the American Mission Board that found them in it. So if I, if I understand right, I think we've got about sort of 50% uh, Singaporean local and about 50% international, I think that's about right. And of that 50% international, there's a fair proportion of that that is um, American. I, I, think, I think the cultural bit that um, where the influence comes from is more that um, perhaps the American congregation, not congregation, the population at, at IBC um, is something in their culture helps them to step forward more. So there's more volunteering, there's more participation um, and, and then leadership than perhaps um, in some of the other cultures that are some of the rest of us. So I, I think there, there is a large amount of leadership that's supplied from the, from the American um, population, but I don't think it's because they founded it or because there's anything structural that means, I think it's just something in their DNA that uh, means they get involved and, and are enthusiastic about it. So, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the whole reason why they planted this church was because they had a heart for the nations. And perhaps they planted it thinking that it would focus much more on the Asian culture. Uh, I'm not sure. Obviously, it's touched much more than that. Um, but I think we still have a heart for the nations here. And that was the very seed that was planted here 50 years ago. Missions is, is very much a part of our uh, our whole mindset and heart here. Uh, so yeah, definitely, I do. I think it's it's reached and touched much more lives than they could have ever have envisioned, and I think that continues to go because so many of the people come here and hear and grow and their lives are changed, and then they go off somewhere else and they carry that with them. And it, they share that and it grows, so it's like a, a ripple effect. I think the English speaking service, we still have the pastors, the senior pastors, and the other pastors are uh, American, so I'm guessing that that's the link to the American Missions Board. I know we support uh, missions through our giving, so I suppose that's another link. Um, but I think IBC as a church has its own identity as well that may be slightly different or separate from what it was. I'm guessing it must have been very different way back when we started. So. The missions are a big part of IBC, even though I have to admit that I actually haven't gone on one yet. But uh, missions is a big part of IBC, so I believe that that's, that general idea is still here about reaching out to people, especially in the uh, regions that are surrounding us. So. I think it's still a big presence right here at IBC, and I think it's going to be a presence or a mission that keeps on going and actually just gets stronger as opposed to weaker just because of, uh, so many people have the passion for going out and serving God in a way that is through the missions and just reaching out. This church is still very mission focused, right? There are many opportunities to do missions here. We know that we support many missionaries. Even today, we had uh, some of the, the missionaries that we support, a presentation from them. So it is still very focused on, on missionaries, right? And, uh, and I think it's something that has remained from 50 years ago when the church was, was founded. Okay. Uh, yeah, very definitely. There's, there's still a lot of positive influence. Just, the, just the, our, our pastoral leadership, right? Um, the whole, uh, our senior pastor, worship, youth, um, are led by really good uh, American uh, uh, pastors, right? Very, very well trained uh, in, in, in the American um, Bible colleges, um, very sound in, in doctrine, right? There. So there's, there's that, definitely a, a huge uh, influence there. And then, the American population itself, while not maybe not a majority, 
I think in terms of being active in some leadership positions, um, maybe as a culture, you know, or, or just the, the caliber of Americans who are coming in as expats into Singapore, the caliber of the people, um, very, you know, they, they have a heart for, for helping, a heart for volunteering, and, and they're very good leaders. Uh, so we see them in councils, right, in, in different uh, ministries or leading small groups. So still a very strong American influence there, positive influence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can. <laughs> because um, obviously our pastor, American, um, actually a lot of our pastors are American, um, and then also a lot of our members are from originally from America. 